What if the most dangerous surveillance device on the market didn't look like surveillance at all? What if it looked like an ordinary pair of Ray-Bans? Meta's smart glasses are already out in the wild. You've walked past them in malls, gyms, and sidewalks without realizing they can record you on the spot. The warning light that's supposed to tell you is so faint that it might as well not even exist. A sticker or even a scratch can erase it completely. In this video, we're gonna break down exactly how these glasses work, where that footage goes, how hackers can bolt facial recognition onto them to track strangers in real time, and most importantly, how you can protect yourself. I'm Addie Lamar. I've spent 15 years in cybersecurity, and today I'm pulling back the curtain on why the scariest surveillance tech is already walking past you in the streets. When you picture surveillance gear, you probably think of hidden cameras tucked into hotel lamps or spy tech locked away in government labs. What you don't think of is a pair of Ray-Bans hanging off to someone's face at the mall. But that's the trick. Meta partnered with Ray-Ban to build smart glasses that look completely ordinary, even fashionable. But under the surface, they've got microphones for audio, dual cameras tucked into the frames, touch controls, and direct integration with Meta's apps. Whoever's wearing them can record video, snap photos, or even stream live, hands-free, in real time, without ever pulling out a phone. From the outside, it looks like nothing more than sunglasses. No lens to avoid or phone you can spot just another person in the crowd. That camouflage is what makes them so dangerous. And the one supposed safeguard is a tiny recording light that can be covered with a sticker, eyeliner, or a scratch. Once that's gone, you have no way of knowing that you're on camera. So what looks like style is actually surveillance. Let's talk about what's changed. It used to be if someone was filming you, they had to pull out a phone. You saw their lens and you had a chance to stop it. But that's over now. And here's the real cybersecurity issue. These aren't spyware, it's the hardware itself. With phones, at least you have signals like hands up, camera app opens, or shutter sounds. But with these glasses, you don't get any of that. You don't get a warning or any say in what happens. And the law assumes that the camera itself is visible. It breaks down when the recording device looks like ordinary eyewear. By the time you realize you were filmed, the data is already gone. It's saved, synced, and maybe categorized by the AI. But the real nightmare isn't just being filmed without knowing, it's what happens to that footage after it's captured. These glasses aren't local storage, they're part of Meta's ecosystem, and that means footage can instantly be uploaded, voice, face, body language, and all packaged as data before you even ordered your next drink. And here's the real problem. Once it hits Meta's cloud, your consent means nothing. That clip, it's training data. Meta systems can cross-reference faces, GPS locations, and voice patterns. Even if someone deletes a clip on their end, the underlying math stays behind. They call them embeddings. They're mathematical fingerprints of your face and voice. They stick around long after you think the video is gone. So this isn't just about Meta making money. This is about how surveillance by individuals feeds into massive corporate systems. One night out can turn into hundreds of data points stored in databases you'll never see. And if consent can be erased online that easily, what happens when it disappears in real life too? In cybersecurity, consent is built on two things, knowing that you're being recorded and having the ability to say no. These glasses remove both. And here's where things get darker. With companies, your data is used for profit. At least there are rules, disclosures, and lawsuits, but people wearing smart glasses are unpredictable and unregulated. They're motivated by obsession, humiliation, or just plain cruelty. No, they don't have terms of service that they adhere to or privacy policy, just human impulse. Once someone captures you, they own the file and the story. You lose control over how you're portrayed. You could be turned into entertainment, humiliated, doxxed, or even fed into an AI model with zero accountability. So now the question becomes, which threat is worse? The one driven by profit or the one with no rules at all? And we don't have to wonder, I had a Brazilian wax done about three weeks ago and it's been haunting me ever since. The girl that was giving me the wax was wearing Meta glasses and I didn't notice it at first. Then I'm like, are you wearing Meta glasses? And she's like, oh yeah, I am, but they're not charged. They're not on, I promise. But then after that, I shut down and I could not stop thinking, could this girl be filming me right now? What if there's been multiple videos she's taken of waxing people? And that can go into a whole other thing of where those videos could be. That can't be right. No job like that, you should be able to wear meta glasses. And she's not the only one. 
Reports are already popping up of meta glasses showing up in gyms, locker rooms, salons, therapy offices, even Ubers. These glasses break what's called contextual privacy. Once the footage is online, it can be scraped, dumped into Discord, indexed by bots, and surfaced by AI-powered search tools trained to dig for leaked content. And the reach keeps growing. So if cameras are showing up in the last places people still feel safe, how much longer before privacy itself just stops existing? To answer that, we need to rewind a bit, because you might remember we've been here before. Back in 2013, Google launched Glass, and the tech worked, but the rollout flopped hard. Why? Because culture turned against it. Glasshole became the insult of the year. Bars banned them. People mocked them. And within two years, Google pulled the plug on the whole project. Meta saw that failure and studied it. They learned exactly what not to do. Their move now is to disguise the surveillance. Instead of sci-fi looking gear, they partner with Ray-Ban, which is the most normal looking sunglasses brand on the planet. It has clean design, familiar frames, and a camera so small that you have to squint to even notice that it's there. That disguise worked on two levels. First, social engineering. Most people won't confront somebody wearing regular looking glasses. It's awkward and accusing someone of filming without proof is really risky. Second, technical stealth. The indicator light is so dim that it's pretty much useless. So enforcement is basically impossible. It's designed obfuscation. They took a recording device and made it look like something completely benign. But that's only half the problem. Once the hardware disappears into fashion, the real question becomes, what can Meta do with all the footage coming through those lenses? If the camera's invisible, what's stopping them from quietly reactivating the most powerful surveillance engine they've ever built? Remember when Facebook used to auto-tag you in every photo? They were running facial recognition across hundreds of billions of images, building biometric profiles and recommending names automatically. That was happening for years until lawsuits forced Meta to pause their program in 2021. They said they were shutting it down, but here's what they didn't say. They didn't say they destroyed the infrastructure, they didn't say they deleted the data, and they didn't say they wiped the AI models trained on your face. Now let's add the smart glasses back into the mix. We're talking dual HD cameras, synced audios, GPS coordinates, timestamp video, all automatically uploaded to Meta servers. The ingredients for reactivating facial recognition are already in place. Voice recordings can be linked to identity, facial expressions captured in real time, and location data tied to your daily routine. From a cybersecurity perspective, this is what we call dormant capability. The systems exist, the data exists, the AI models are just sitting there. All it takes is a policy change or even a hidden setting to bring it all back to life. Now imagine the chilling effects. You join a protest, somebody nearby is wearing Ray-Bans. That footage gets uploaded in seconds and Meta's backend could parse the crowd, identify faces, analyze mood, tag people by name, and no one would ever know it happened. It doesn't even have to be used publicly to be dangerous. The possibility alone is enough to make people think twice before speaking up, showing up, or resisting. And here's the twist. Meta doesn't even have to flip the switch because others already have. While the news has been busy talking about AI art and ChatGPT, something way creepier has been brewing in hacker forums and GitHub repos. Developers have been strapping facial recognition onto wearable cameras themselves. Some are using Raspberry Pis, some are hacking together off-the-shelf parts, and yeah, some are even using Meta's Ray-Bans as the video feed itself. They run the footage through open source facial recognition models, and just like that, a regular pair of glasses becomes a real-time identity machine. And the wildest demo so far came from two Harvard students that proved it. They connected wearable cameras, including Meta's smart glasses, to PimEyes, a public facial recognition engine. They could walk through the subway station, glance at strangers, and instantly pull up names, job histories, social media profiles in real time. It was super creepy, but it also proved something critical. The hardware is ready, the software is easy, and the barrier to entry gets lower every month. And if hobbyists can do this with free tools and a weekend project, imagine what happens when a company polishes it, markets it, and starts selling it at scale. At that point, the real question becomes, how do we fight back? Google Glass didn't die because of some big government crackdown. It died because people hated it. The cultural immune system still works now, and we can strengthen it with policy, tech, and good old fashioned public pressure. Next, venue bans. Push for smart glasses to be banned in gyms, bars, offices, schools, anywhere people expect a baseline of privacy. These bans work during the Google Glass era and they still translate. 
A simple sign can make a big difference. Now let's talk policy, the legal levers that actually close the consent gap. First, mandatory notice is impossible to miss. A bright front-facing LED and an audible shutter should be the minimum legal requirement. No silent modes or invisible lights. Ireland's privacy watchdog already warned that Meta's current LED is way too small, and the fact that it can be covered is a total fail. Second, cloud restraint. If footage is going to sync to a platform, there needs to be clear rules around how it's stored, how long it stays, and whether it's used for AI training. Meta's already admitted that some of its AI features do train on user photos. And in most systems, deleting a file doesn't delete the embeddings left behind. Once your data becomes math, it sticks. That's why we also need a practical privacy toolkit, stuff that you can use right now. Let's break it down into three parts, detect, disrupt, and defend. Detect. This means to learn what to look for. Smart glasses usually have a small pinhole lens. If someone covers the LED, you have no signal at all that they're recording you. Disrupt. Infrared flooding works. A small 940 nanometer IR array, clip-on or wearable, can blind most camera sensors without affecting human vision. Prototypes like Nick Build's Freedom Shield show that this works. You can also use adversarial makeup or patterns, basically designs that confuse facial recognition models. These work best in high-risk contexts like protests or surveillance-heavy spaces. Defend. Start with your own spaces. Ask your gen. Ask your office. Talk to HR. Push for clear rules. No wearable cameras on premises. And here's why this matters even more than corporate surveillance. Peer surveillance is raw, impulsive, and fast. Someone can film you, upload it, and turn you into a meme before you even realized what happened. And it doesn't just stop at recording. Once that footage hits the cloud, it's learned. Every clip trains the machine. Every frame becomes part of a predictive model. That's when the threat shifts from being seen to being profiled. The pipeline is simple. Camera goes to cloud, goes to embedding, goes to inference. Once your face becomes math, it's a prediction engine. Even if you hit delete, the system still remembers you. And that's the real threat. So here's the counterplay. Set community norms. Make it a thing. Post no wearable camera signs. The more visible the pushback, the more friction these devices face. Push for legible tech. We need recording devices to be obvious. Bright LEDs, audible shutter sounds, no silent mode. No stealth allowed. When the social cost of wearing these glasses outweighs the convenience, that's when things start to shift. Google Glass died because people bullied it. They laughed and mocked it, banned it in bars and gyms. Glasshole became a meme, and the culture rejected it loudly. And that's what killed it. Meta studied that and got smarter. They had surveillance behind Ray-Ban branding, made it stylish, quiet, without any red flags or visible lens. But here's the thing, they only win if we stay silent, but we can still flip the script. We can name it, ban it, call it out when we see it. We can push for real policies and build counter tech. We can make it socially awkward to wear these in public. And the second that social cost gets higher than the convenience, that's when the whole wave collapses. We've already beaten one pair of smart glasses. That's 1-0 us. Keep the pressure and Meta never gets their second chance. 2-0 is ours.